Hello there, programmers, and welcome to another episode of Dumb as Code. I'm your host, Chris Franklin. So uh, today I wanted to change it up a little bit. I'm not going to do pure coding tutorial. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to walk you through uh, one of my favorite IDEs in the Python world. It's called PyCharm. Now, um, you can just go search PyCharm on the internet, find the way to install it. I'm not going to run through how to actually install it because it changes based off of uh, what system you're running on. But as you can see, I run on a Mac, so uh, that's where I'm going to be giving you this. But all of the internals of the application are going to be identical. So um, when you start up PyCharm, um, you might start up on a full window or you might start with no project actually opened. Uh, in this case, I have all of my projects closed. So this is the welcome to PyCharm window you see. Over here on the left, you can see all of the um, applications I've, I've worked on. A lot of these as uh, tutorials that are here on my channel. So uh, none of this should be a surprise. Uh, you can now open up um, an existing project that you already have on your system. So if you've been working in Python before and have never used PyCharm, you can open it up here using the open dialog. The only requirement here is that there be files for you to actually open. You just select a file and open it, you can, and it will pull it open as uh, inside of PyCharm for you. Uh, you can also click new project or get from version control. So if you have um, a GitHub repository that you want to open directly, you can click this button here and do that. We're not going to dig into any of those details. What we're going to do instead is we're going to open a brand new project and we're going to um, say this is our uh, PyCharm tour. Now, some of the things I really love about PyCharm are the fact that you can use this uh, new environment and what, what this will do is it will set up something like a virtual environment for you. Um, if you've worked in Python before, virtual environments are a great way to separate out all of the requirements and all of the libraries that you're going to be pulling in for a particular project. And so I like to use virtual environment. You can use a pip environment or conda instead if you rather. Uh, but I use virtual environment. It's what I'm used to using, so that's what I continue to use. You can also select your interpreter here. You can go through the list of available interpreters on your system. I have Python 3.9 installed, so that's the one I am using. That's the latest and greatest as of the time of this tutorial. Uh, the other thing that could that you could do is you could um, create just a raw package, no environment, with your outside interpreter just running it on the system interpreter here. Um, and then um, this option down below, you can check it or not. Um, I'm going to actually uncheck this. This creates a main.py, and it also creates the configuration to run that file for you automatically. But I'm going to show you how to actually set that up here in this tutorial. So we're not going to create this file by default. Instead, we're just going to create. Uh, it'll take a second because it's going to create the virtual environment. If you were to do this from the command line, you'd have to run uh, the virtual environment command uh, module, and uh, it would set up the virtual environment folder for you, and then you source the that folder to set it all up. But uh, this is doing all of that for you. It's installing pip. It's installing uh, Python 3.9. All of those things are being copied into the virtual environment. Okay. So once this actually is done, you'll see over here the folder with everything in it. As I said, this copies everything that you need into the virtual environment folder for you automatically. All right. So we're going to close that folder. We're not going to be messing with it. It's already there. It's done. So there's a couple of things here that we can look at. First, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new... Um, project uh, uh, Python file. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the main folder and once we do that we can select uh, new Python file. Okay, And it will ask you what is the name of the Python file. So we're going to stick with the basic main.py. We hit enter. It creates the file for us. Okay, So once this file is created let's go ahead and set up just a basic script um, there's a lot of things we can do uh, here. If we type in, for instance, start to type in import, this will actually show us uh, and try to auto-complete for us. And if I hit tab, it will finish that statement for me. And so I can see, uh, now when I start typing, I can see all of the different modules that I can actually import here uh, that start with S. So I want sys, so I will start to type that. And then I will hit tab and it will complete that for me and bring in the sys module into this Python package. OK, so um, you'll also see one of the benefits of using PyCharm is that it'll do these lovely little squiggle lines here. 
if you bring in an import that isn't actually being used, it'll put this yellow squiggly line under it that is a warning, and it and if you scroll over the top of it, it says uh, unused import statement import sys. So we're not using it right now, so it's not actually being used. Okay. Now we can come down here and um, we can use our dunder main. Um, so if we do dunder name equals dunder main, uh, and then we say um, we're just gonna we're just gonna straight up exit whenever we're done here. Okay. Um, now notice here that there is now a little green check mark uh, or a green arrow here, not a check mark. Uh, an arrow and we can actually click this and it will run main and debug main okay so this because we're using the dunder main uh, here this knows that this is an executable bit of code um, the other way to go about doing this instead of clicking it in the gutter here is to go up here and add a configuration which is what we're going to do in a second now there's also another squiggly line here now what is this actually telling us oh according to pep 8 uh, no new line at the end of file. So if we want to uh, meet the um, the criteria of the of PEP and actually follow all the best practices, this will actually warn you and tell you when you're doing things that it doesn't agree with. So adding a new line at the end of the file is one of those things. So we can save this file. I hit Command S to do so. Now I want to add a configuration manually. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to click on Add Configuration, and it'll pop up this window here with all the different configurations in it. There are none right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit plus to add a new configuration. And we're going to say this is a new Python configuration. That makes sense, right? Because it's Python. And we're going to say this is to run our main file. Okay. So we name it main so that we see this is our main file. Now in here we can select, we, we use this uh, drop down here and it will open up PyCharm Tor, which is the Python file that we're in. And then we can come in here into main.py. Uh, this is the file that we want to actually run. So we select the file. It'll automatically start at the folder that is your project. And then you can select your Python file that you want to be able to execute out of the drop down here. Once you do that, uh, it'll select a Python interpreter for you it, based off of what you set up in your project. You can also change this to other uh, Python interpreters if you want to, but we're going to leave it running here in PyCharm Tour, Python 3.9. Okay, so we can apply all of this, and um, there's a lot of other things you can do. You can set up your Python path, you can emulate terminals, you can do all kinds of fun stuff in here. But for now, we're just going to leave it pretty basic. We're not going to pass in any parameters or anything like that. We hit OK, and now you'll see this green arrow up here is lit up, as is the green bug. Now, we're not going to run in debug mode. All we're going to do now is we're going to hit go. And what you'll see is the process exit with a code of zero. Now, I can change the exit code here. I can say, let's say this fails with an exit code of one. Oh, look, it exit codes one. All right. So you can see this is running this code up here, and it's printing out the results here. Okay. That's the basics of how to set up a new file and how to set it up as something that you can run. Now you can add additional files in here if you want to, and each of them can have their own ex executable and you can set those up. And then just in your drop down, you can select what file you want to actually execute and run. Okay. Um, now, while we're looking down here, um, there are some fun things that uh, PyCharm gives you out of the box that are great so let's say we don't want to we don't want to do this we want to fix this eventually what we can do is we can use the hashtag to say um, that we're going to put a comment here and I can put a to do and after that to do I can say uh, change to uh, change to exit code zero okay so this is something I want to come back and address again I don't want it to be here um, if you look here you need at least two spaces before an inline comment so another uh, another thing to correct here and uh, now we have a to do and it colors it this yellow color to tell us that there is a to do in the code now what we can do is we can go down here into um, our uh, PyCharm editor down here and we can go oh, click on our to-do list why is it not selected our to-do list oh because I've got Oh, I'm sorry. Let's uh, shrink this window down just a little bit here because uh, 
There we go. Now I can highlight it. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's behind my pause button uh, for this recording. So there we go. If we click on the to-do button, now that we, it's not behind the pause button, um, you can actually see there is a main.py, there is a to-do, and it tells you the text of that to-do code. So this is super useful if you're working on a big project and you want to come back and address something later. You can put a little to-do here and see this list of all the things that I want to do. If I click on it, it'll take me to that file and that location. Since there's only one file and location, it's already here and open. Okay. You can also see any problems in your current file if there's anything that's uh, that needs additional work like let's say I remove this new line and I save now all of a sudden you can see in your problems tab where that problem actually exists and you can fix it uh, here um, so this will show you any pet problems that you have and any other errors that are happening in any of the files that you're working on on a project the other thing that you can do is you can open up a terminal this is like a system terminal um, it ignore my helm problems here um, but yeah so you can see this is this is actually a uh, a real working terminal you can move uh, navigate around uh, everything on your computer you can see uh, any anywhere in your system that you want to do it starts you out with the virtual environment selected and in the folder of your project so you can see uh, everything that you need to do from terminal you can do here I like to use this as uh, if I want to install packages, so if I want to say install Pygame, I can run it from here, pip install Pygame, and this will bring it into my virtual environment and it'll get stuck up into my external libraries up above here. Okay, so this is great. This is just a lot of fun stuff that you can do here in your terminal. The other thing that I find really useful about PyCharm is now there's the Python console down here, and I can test out uh, all kinds of stuff that I want to see I can say is Pygame installed if I uh, import it here I can see oh yes Pygame is actually installed and it's working and I can test out uh, does, uh, x equals hello and I can say all right well what's an x you know anything that you want to do in your interpreter that's all down here in the Python console down below so PyCharm has a lot of fun things built into it that I use on a daily basis um, we'll come back in a later lesson and we'll look at some of the power of the debugger because there's a lot of things you can do to step through line by line and see what variables are set to and to be able to see the code execute in live time line by line uh, just using this this debugger the built-in debugger that comes with here so we won't cover that now uh, this is already getting pretty long but um, if you were not using PyCharm, hopefully this convinces you. It comes with a lot of cool features out of the gate. There is so much more that it would take me hours and hours and hours of videos to go through everything that's hidden inside of this gem of an IDE. So I hope if you're not using it, this has convinced you to at least take a serious look at PyCharm. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.